Hey there, and welcome to another episode of A Hormonal Woman's Guide to Hallmark, the internet's only pregnancy-induced Hallmark movie critiquing show. Uh, today we're gonna mix things up, because it's my TV show, or YouTube show, or whatever the fuck you wanna call it. And um, we're gonna be watching The Big Flower Fight on Netflix. There are eight episodes of the TV show, so we're gonna be watching two a week, so it's gonna take us four weeks to get through the show. But um, for those of you that don't know, before COVID happened, I worked at a plant nursery. So I really love plants and flowers and I know a lot of stuff about plants. Useless knowledge, basically. Um, so my friend Clara recommended I watch this show on my channel. I mean, I was gonna watch the show anyway, but she was like, how would you film yourself watching it? And I was like, brilliant, Clara. So that's what we're gonna do. For those of you that don't know about the show, um, it's uh, 10 pairs of florists, sculptors, sculptors, and garden designers face off in a friendly floral fight to see who can build the biggest, boldest garden sculptures. Say friendly floral fight 10 times fast while drunk or stoned. I'm sure you're not going to get through that. So it'll be interesting. I love flowers and shit. So we're going to be watching this. We're watching the first two episodes today. Let's go. I have hot gardening. <laughs> I'm sure that wasn't that funny, but I found it hilarious. Oh, okay, so the first challenge is giant insects. Oh, I'm so down. Oh my god, look at all those plants. Look how pretty those plants are. Oh god, Henrik and Jan are just the most flamboyant team. They have 15 hours to build these giant insects. That's a long day. Okay, so when I had a job, and I was at work, we had this rocking chair. And for reasons I will not get into, um, the rocking chair was never completed because somebody had an issue that I was working on it and they told me to take it apart. So, uh, but it was beautiful. I actually used chicken wire and the existing frame of the rocking chair and moss and I was gonna plant succulents into it. So it was gonna be like a rocking chair with the backing wrapped in succulents all around. It was gonna be really cool and I was like a third of the way down with it before I had to take it all apart because somebody has issues with me. And she was not happy that I wanted to do the rocking chair because she wanted to do the rocking chair. Um, that rocking chair is now sitting in a trash pile. So, I mean, and I didn't, I don't have any experience in any of that. I just came up with the idea myself. I saw chicken wire at work and I was like, I can totally make this work. And then I used fishing line and um, other wire to keep it together. So they're not allowed to use chicken wire. Interesting. You basically have to use uh, coconut lining or um, some other semi-porous like burlap. Semi-porous outer thing to keep all the dirt and stuff inside or whatever you're using to hold the plants in place. Oh my god, Jan and Henrik are like the most flam- oh my god. They are amazing. Just their fashion sense alone. Some of them are using chicken wire. Three different teams are doing butterflies. Like, you guys couldn't come up with like any other insect but butterfly. There are other insects that have wings. What are the odds that two teams would pick the most popular butterfly ever, the monarch? Really, people? There are also hundreds of types of butterflies that you could have picked from. It's so interesting to see the different ways that people pronounce plants because they said hookera and we say huchera, so that's interesting. You need a lot more moss love. You gotta pack moss. If you're gonna do like a moss chicken wire or moss anything like that, you gotta pack that shit. One, it's gotta be wet. Two, you have to pack it like fucking crazy, more than what you think you'd need. And then once it dries, you'll need probably more, but you have to work while it's wet. But you have to overpack it. Like if there's any give at all when you're packing it, you need more. I think the team from Brooklyn is going home. It's either the team from Brooklyn or it's the young team, uh, Monet and Steph. I don't know who's gonna win best in bloom. All right, time for the reveal of everybody's plans. Oh, that beetle's horrible. Oh my God, Jan and Hendrix is beautiful. Oh, no, jewel beetle, no, disgusting, gross. Yeah, that's not a good one. Delilah and whatever, the Brooklyn girls. Oh, the fuck is that? The honeybee one is very good as well from that couple. Best in Bloom has to be between Jan and Henrik and uh, the bee with that couple. Jan and Hank got blessed in Best in Bloom. 
Yes, they deserve that. That was a beautiful moth. I love it. I love the moth. Steph and Monet got sent home, which is understandable. Their, their butterfly was just, eh. I mean, but they, they have so much room to grow. They're really young and they have so much room to grow. Like they, their talent is there. They just need to hone it in a little bit. Ooh, they're working with cut flowers today. So all the florists will do a great job. Ooh, cut flowers, but they have to make a couture fashion. Ooh, this is gonna be interesting. So now you have to have that fashion component and you're working with cut flowers, which is already very difficult to work with because you have to make sure your flowers are going to survive and not wilt. This is gonna be a good episode. Oh my gosh, they have to put it on an actual model too. Holy shit. So they have 12 hours to do this challenge. Oh my gosh, Raymond and Chanel are florist and fashion designers. Oh, they got this in the bag. I really dig this father-son team. Oh, the father-son team's gonna be using hops. That is very interesting. I hope no one chooses hydrangeas. Those are really hard to keep from wilting. Even when they're not cut flowers, they're really hard to keep from wilting. I don't know how my florist did it. I had delphinium flowers in my white, uh, wedding bouquet and they lasted all day. Okay, so... Andrew and his partner are using paper mache for their dress. Like, how is that gonna keep the flowers good until judgment? The Brooklyn girls, Delilah and Rachel, again, are not impressing me. Ooh, Bowens and Declan's look amazing. Oh God, I don't know who's gonna win this. Ooh, but Sarah and Jordan's is really nice. Helen's and Andy's looks really good, but it's like, it's just, it's, it's very basic. It's beautiful, but it doesn't wow me. Yeah, Jan and Hanks is not that great. Ralph and Jim, it just looks like there's so much going on. Again, the Brooklyn girls, um, Rachel and Delilah is just, it's eh. And their flowers are wilting. They're very low. I don't think they're gonna make it out of this round. I really also like Owen and Declan's too. I think that it's up between Owen and Declan and Jordan, and Sarah. I think that they're the top two for best in bloom. Rachel and Delilah have to go home. They are hit, they're missing the mark every single time. I don't like Chanel and Raymond's. It's not that, I don't like it. I, I understand that they were trying to go for with creating flowers with their heritages, but it just, you could have done something a little bit better than a DNA helix around the body. They don't like Nick and Taylor's. I mean, it's not horrible. It's just not on par. Oh, Chanel and Raymond got best in bloom. Are you kidding me? Sarah and Jordan's was clearly better. It showed texture that was supposed to be used as fabric. It showed the fabric, like, they're, what they did mimicked fabric so well that that should have won. And that was the whole point of this. They are florists, not fashion designers, and they created something beautiful. Raymond and Chanel just look bleh. Rachel and Delilah are leaving. That's pretty damn, dang obvious that they were gonna leave. Okay, so those are the first two episodes of the big flower fight. Obviously, I can't really rate it because, you know, it's a competition and I believe me giving you my opinion was reading the entire time. So next week, we're gonna be watching episodes three and four. So stick around for that for all of my floral plant knowledge, as well as some sassy remarks about whether or not these people should stay or go. Tune in next time for a hormonal woman's guide to Hallmark.